since launch, Red Dead Redemption 2 on PC thus far has been kind of riddled with technical problems. And though it hasn't been long, so Rockstar haven't really addressed it in any fashion yet, barring problems caused by the launcher conflicting with people's antivirus software, there is one issue that needs addressing now by us, the players. And that is, of course, the performance issues players are getting while playing the game. Now, if you're running a low-end PC, then there's no doubt that you're going to see some performance hits because your PC is low-end. However, if your PC is more towards the high end and you're still seeing some issues, then this video may be of some help to you. Furthermore, these adjustments, shall we say, may not promise a constant 60 frames per second playing the game, as the game is incredibly demanding, but it will prevent stutter and constant frame drops that render the game painful to play. Or at least it did for me. God knows what it'll do for you. Here's my modest hardware, which is a little bit dated these days. However, it serves me well, so I can't complain. And of course, a lovely GTX 1080 Ti on top. And then there's the motherboard, which is definitely getting on a bit at this point. And it's running a hard disk drive as opposed to a solid state drive. Yes, I realize a platform upgrade is on the horizon for me. Unfortunately, I'm not made of money, so I'd imagine a lot of players are also in that position. There'll always be that one goon in the comments who will go, ha! You have those specs, pathetic. I run, and then they'll go on to list the godliest specs that they can think of. I think we should all take a moment out of our day to appreciate that that guy probably does not have the hardware that he says he does. Anyways, now you know what my hardware is, now you know what you can probably expect from yours with regards to what I'm going to do in this video to improve the performance of Red Dead Redemption 2 on PC. Now, the first thing that I would recommend doing is enabling VSync. For those who don't know what VSync does, it basically limits your frame rate exactly to the monitor's refresh rate which can help prevent issues such as screen tearing and as I've noticed at ridiculous frame rates when you see a drop you will notice it visually and when frame rates are ridiculously high they're wildly unstable and will fluctuate like nothing you've ever seen before. That being said in this game that's not so likely to happen and you won't see a higher frame rate to the refresh rate on your monitor anyway so there's no point in not enabling VSync. So if your monitor's 60 hertz, then you're not going to notice any higher than 60 FPS. So think of it as a caution to avoid unnecessarily high frame rates. Now most of my graphical settings won't necessarily be relevant as that's all very dependent on the hardware that you're running. So with most of these settings you're going to want to tweak about and find out what works for you to get the best performance. However, there are some things that you can do which definitely help out. It may be worth disabling or lowering the multi-sample anti-aliasing. A couple viewers in the comments to my PC version thoughts video gave me the tip of disabling this to see if it improved performance and it did. You're also going to want to lower your temporal anti-aliasing sharpening as i've noticed unless you're looking for a difference you will not find one but it still hammers performance i'm not saying disable these anti-aliasing settings that will be ridiculously painful to look at wouldn't it just lower them and give it a try it definitely worked for me that being said it's definitely not the big hitter here if you don't have to lower them probably don't as though it's quite heavy in itself the difference in performance with them and without them is quite minimal if you have that kind of power though i definitely saw some improvements doing this i'm not so convinced it was the biggest difference that was made that made my experience better so let's get on to what that one was now what i noticed which was a bit weird was that the graphics api was auto set to vulcan as opposed to DirectX 12 so what you're going to want to do is unlock the advanced graphics settings and change that if you're on an nvidia graphics card. You may see a lower average frame rate, however, what I've noticed is this stabilizes the frame rate and makes it more consistent, meaning that while the frame rate may drop a little bit, it won't drop nearly as far. And the frame rate isn't that much lower on average anyway. It may be two, three or four frames, that's nothing really, is it? But Nvidia graphics cards especially seem to be much happier utilizing DirectX 12 as opposed to Vulkan. Whereas if you're using an AMD card, you should probably see less of a problem here. And as a final recommendation to those who haven't already, and I'm sure if you've gotten this far into your searching that you've somehow stumbled across this video, I'd imagine you have, it's definitely make sure that your graphics drivers are up to date. If you do this you'll see less bugs and you'll definitely be putting yourself in the best position to get a superior performance. Then of course after you've faffed with all these settings and you've applied them, restart the game and if you don't see a change in the performance there then maybe try restarting your entire system. It's simple things like that that a lot of people would consider tedious that can have a massive impact. And then of course there's the simple point of making sure no other demanding software is running as that's sure to make an impact too. If all else fails, stick it on stupidly low settings and hope for the best. Don't do that, the PC gaming gods will cry. So there's what I did to get a better performance out of Red Dead Redemption 2 
2 on PC. Like I said, these tweaks do not promise a miracle, and the end of the day, it's all dependent on your hardware. You may not get a constant stable 60 frames per second, however, it stops the lag spikes and the things like that that players have been suffering from, despite running the game on PC builds that should be way beyond ever having those issues. It's also worth noting that I'm just some random idiot online that has far too much time on his hands to figure out what exactly works here. And while the footage that I'm showing is evidence that it worked for me, performance issues in PCs can be for a plethora of reasons. And sometimes, in my experience, it can be for no reason at all. So while I hope this video is helpful to most people, I know that it definitely will not fix everybody's problems. Either way, hopefully you have found this video helpful. And if not, then I sincerely apologise and hope that you find something that works and fixes your issues sooner rather than later. So, thank you all for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed, be sure to go ahead, leave a like, subscribe, share the channel with your friends and all that wonderful stuff, I'd really appreciate it, and I guess I'll see you all very soon with another video at some point. <laughs>